يعطيكم العافية طلابنا وحبايبنا كيفكم شو أخباركم إن شاء الله تكونوا كلكم بخير رح ننتقل بالفيزيكس نخلص خلصنا الكهرباء أخذنا السبليمنتري وتمنى اللي بعده مش حاللهم نكملهم للهوموركس ورح ننتقل لعيونت جديدة هي الميكانيكس آخر يونت عندكم إياها هي يونت 4 لأن عندنا يونت 3 نحن مش مطلوب رح ننتقل دايركتلي ليونت 4 اللي هي الميكانيكس ورح نكون مع أول درس اللي هو ميكانيكال أكشنز هو درس أنتو مارق معكم بالصف الثامن الفورسز بس ولكن هون رح تكون شوية مراجعة وشوي أوسع أول شي رح أعرض عليكم أنا هيدا هيدا الفيديو بنفس الوقت هيدا الفيديو كمان رح أشرح معه أنا ال الأشياء اللي رح تكون مش واضحة رح أوضحها أكثر فإذا بنبلش Definition. Force is a mechanical action exerted by one object. The action of the force on another object. The receiver of the force. The examples above show the effects of a. فإذن هوني أول شيء تعرف ال mechanical action أو ال force. Force is a mechanical action exerted by one object. نسميها ال actor. The actor of the force and who is acting with force on another object. نسميها ال receiver. Who is acting with the force. Hi, the tariff of force or mechanical action. This is the definition, and in this definition, also in this video, we'll continue now the effects of force. As we see here, let's see the examples. Force. Present the first effect of a force is sets a body in motion, as you see, and here it changes the direction of motion. And here it deforms the third one deforms the shape of a body. So here in the first one, the kicker kicks the ball. He uh, exerts a force on it. This force produces motion. And الطابة تحركت شاط الطابة اللاعب والطابة تحركت فإذا هو he produces a motion this force he he exerts on on the ball produces motion and in the next figure the one who is playing tennis is changing the motion of the ball and in the third figure the one who is using the axe is deforming the shape of wood so here we have three effects of force the force produces motion in the first one and the force changes the direction of motion and the force changes or deforms the shape of a body continue part two different types of forces how many types of forces do we have as you know from grade eight we have two types of forces contact forces and forces acting at distance contact forces the contact forces are those forces let's start with the contact forces direct contact between the actor and the receiver so the contact forces are those forces that appear when there is a direct contact between the actor and the receiver as you see in these examples elastic force spring and a ball hanged in the spring and there is contact between the ball and the spring the elastic force the force of friction force of friction a car moving on the road the wheels of the car are in direct contact with the surface of the road and muscular force the muscular force this man pushes the box he will be in direct contact with the box and he puts his hands on the box so these are examples of contact that force are all examples of the contact force As you can see here, the car is moving on the road. Direct contact between the wheels and the road. And the man is pushing the box. Direct contact between. Look at the man. He puts his hands on the box. Part three. Different types of forces. Forces acting from a distance. The forces acting at a distance produce their effect on bodies without physical contact. So, the other type of force is forces acting from a distance. The other type of forces are the forces acting from a distance. As we will see here in these examples, there is 
no direct contact between the actor and the receiver there is no direct contact between the one doing the force and the object receiving the force they include gravitational force magnetic force and electric force so we have three types of forces gravitational force or weight We have three types of forces acting from a distance. The first one is the uh, uh, force of gravity or gravitational force, which is called weight. And the other force is the magnetic force. And the third force is the electric force. As we rub the pen on our uh, clothes and then we attract by it the pins of papers. Part four. Characteristics of a force. In this part, we are going to explain now the characteristics of, of a force. As you know, also, we have four characteristics of force point of application, line of action, direction, and magnitude. Any force is characterized by its point of application, its line of action, its direction, and its magnitude. Point of application and contact forces is the point. Of contact between the receiver and the actor point of contact between the receiver and the actor or as we can say point of contact between the actor or the receiver and the receiver this is the point of application in contact forces and forces acting from a distance the uh, point of application is the center of gravity of the receiver the center of gravity of the receiver line of action line of action could be vertical could be uh, could be vertical could be horizontal and could be oblique direction let's state the directions uh, let's say here for example in this example to the left to the right upward downward these are the direction in addition to Oblique is a kind of line of action oblique with cone feather. For example, we can cone uh, upward left, upward right, downward right, or downward left. The magnitude, the magnitude of force can be measured by using or uh, a spring balance, or it may be given. Point of application. Look at this point. Is this point of, is the point of application? Direction to the left. Line of action is horizontal, as you can see. Part five. Representation of a force. How? In part five, how do we represent of a force? How do we represent a force? The characteristics of the force exerted by the hand on the hook are. Let's uh, listen. The force is represented by vector f. Its magnitude is measured by means of a spring balance and is expressed in Newton in the international system. So, a force is represented by a vector or an arrow by describing and how, how do we uh, draw this vector or an arrow? We should know the point of application where it is. We should know the line of action of this uh, vector, vertical or horizontal or oblique, the direction, is it upward or downward or uh, to the left or to the right or upward left or downward left or upward right or downward right. And the magnitude can be measured by using a spring balance or it may be given. National system. Part 6. A particular force, the weight. The weight of the body is the force of attraction exerted by the earth on the body. Its magnitude is measured by means of a spring balance and is expressed in Newton in the... The particular, here we have a particular force which is the weight. The weight of a body is the force of, of the attraction of earth on the body. Its magnitude can be measured by means of a spring balance or it can be calculated by the formula weight equal mass times gravity where the unit of weight is the newton the mass in kilogram and the gravity is in newton per kilogram in the si units international system part seven characteristics of the weight 
The weight is represented by vector W, whose characteristics are the following. Point of application, center of the gravity G. Line of action, vertical. Direction, downward. Magnitude, W equals M times G. So, Part eight, center of gravity of some this, solid. this Part weight, eight, center of gravity, point of application, center of the gravity G. Line of action, vertical. Direction, downward. Magnitude, W equals M times G. So, this weight has a standard characteristics. They do not change. These characteristics do not change. Its center of gravity is the uh, its point of application is the center of gravity of the body. Its direction is always downward. Its line of action is vertical all the time and its magnitude is calculated by the formula weight equal mass times gravity as you can see here please memorize these characteristics the weight is presented by w whose characteristics on the following are the following point of application center of the gravity g line of action vertical direction downward magnitude weight equal mass times gravity these characteristics of a weight are constant they do not change Part eight, center of gravity of some homogeneous solid bodies here are some examples of how to find the center of gravity of some bodies the center of the gravity is generally an element of symmetry as for a circular sheet it is its center. As center. for a square plate or a rectangular one, it is the meeting of its diagonals. In a square, in, in a cube or in a rectangular par uh, parallel pipe, rectangular prism, as well, uh, the center of gravity is the point of intersection of the diagonals. In a cylinder, the midpoint of this cylinder. As for a cylindrical plate, it is the midpoint. Part 9 list of forces to make the list of the forces acting on a body you should show the set of contact forces and those acting from a distance as you can see here the last part of this chapter is the list of forces on an object here we have a ball is attracted by this rod the ball is negatively charged and the rod is positively charged so, so they attract each other this rod exerts a force on the ball where is this force exerted this force exerted by the rod on the ball is a force acting from a distance so its point of application is center is the center of gravity of the ball is this is the point of application of the force exerted by the rod on the ball also the ball is under the action of the attraction of the earth which is also a force acting from a distance and so the uh, the point of application of the force weight is the center of gravity of this ball the third force is acted upon on the ball is acted upon the ball is the tension of the string the tension of the string is a contact force so the point of application of this tension force is the point of contact between the string and the ball as you can see here in the figure part 10 center of gravity of some This box is sliding on an inclined plane. It's under the action of three forces. Let's classify these forces and describe their characteristics. The force exerted first, the weight of the box, which is the force exerted by the earth on the box. Its point of application is the center of gravity of the box. Its direction is downward. Its line of action is vertical and its magnitude is calculated by the formula weight equal mass times gravity. The other force exerted on the on the box is the normal reaction of the inclined plane which is the force N. The point of application of this force is the point of contact or the central point of contact between the box and the inclined plane which is here. This point is the point of application of N. Its direction is 
upward to the right as you can see and its line of action is oblique the third force exerted on the box since it is moving is the force of friction this is the force of friction the point of application is the point of contact between the box and the inclined plane its direction is upward to the left and its uh, uh, line of action is oblique is oblique This is the chapter of mechanical action. I hope you will understand it well and please uh, revise the exercises and do them as an assignment for the next time you have physics. Uh, I think it's on Tuesday. Thank you for watching.